So this, so this stupid, stupid PC, PC was digging both its, its own and my channel's grave. Do you wanna you know, know how much it costs to fix, fix this mess? mess? Three, Three digits. digits. Power up the system and then did the exact same, same thing. thing. Yes, hi, I'm outside again. I know, professional. One of the things I've been seeing about myself recently is that I constantly remind everyone that I'm alive. So here's why. Wow. It's just like real life, man. What the... If you've been keeping up to date with my channel, then you are most certainly lying. Because, for one, why would you want to keep up with this garbage? And two, there's no content to keep up with, because you see, my channel does a very funny thing called dying. And no, it's not because I'm lazy. That's only part of the problem. But recently, my PC attempted to commit some pretty scary stuff. I was... Almost certain that I broke it. You know, the, the thing that I edit on. So this stupid PC was digging both its own and my channel's grave. Let me explain. Now, like only the finest craftsmen in this plane of existence, I like to push the boundaries and just see what little things I can do to make every moment of my content look and feel just a bit better. At least on the editing side of things, my stupid voice and script writing is still apparently boring everyone to death. And all I can do is... Uh, agree. But there are just certain times where the boundaries just... can't be pushed. That's right, I'm gonna do what every good craftsman does, and completely blame their tools. Now, you should probably go without saying that I don't try to break my computer, but there are definitely some times that happen that I definitely almost killed the thing. I just thought they could be a little fun to share, I guess. And no, I'm not talking about the common blue screen of death. No, I mean full-on, completely frying components of the thing inside it. So let's start simple and then work our way up to the most anxiety-inducing moment of my entire life so far. See? Look, people, I did the retention thing. Are you gonna watch now? Is this still a waste of your time? <laughs> I guess while we're on the topic of it, let's start with a simple blue screen, just to get it out of the way. This is an Intel Core i5 something gen RTX 3060 Ti 32GB of DDR4 RAM and a nice 5.4 terabytes of storage system. Don't ask why this has so many drives, that's a completely different video. And I've only ever blue screened this thing three times all during the same project on the same day. More specifically, it was rendering this scene for a video that I'm sure none of you watched because apparently you nerds aren't bothered enough to stick around for 8 minutes, so I highly doubt the majority of you would stick around for 20! I mean, I'm not really mad about it. it I'm, I respect people and their attention spans. I, I'm gonna die alone, am I? There are three parts of this monstrosity. Three of the same clip layered on top of each other with different color splitting, an adjustment layer on top of that to create the noise and upwards wave movement, and lastly some other layouts to really sell the whole thing. Put them all together on top of each other and then export them and your computer kills itself. Three times this thing died, so what I had to do instead was export each of these layers individually and then smash them all together in the final edit. All that pain was definitely worth it for a 90 degree drop retention graph. Let me know if I should delete my channel tomorrow. This is also a pretty minor story compared to the one at the end, but I thought it was worth mentioning because why not? So a relative of mine had a set of broken computers that their company gave them because, well, they were broken and just said to me, hey, do you want these? You'll probably find a better use for them than I will. And not really thinking too much about that, I just said, yeah, sure, why not? When they arrived, I didn't try to fix them, I didn't really have a need to, I just immediately took them apart to try and salvage whatever was still alive. My default initiative was I would at least get a few more bits of storage in my main computer, so I guess that's a bonus. Which, yes, there was. There were decently sized hard drives and SSDs in them. But about 15 minutes into the salvage, I noticed... Wait. DDR4? 8 gig RAM sticks? Smagsmum? Wait, what the hell? This thing is actually usable. At that moment, I realized I schooled myself two sets of 8GB RAM sticks 
for free? At a speed more quicker than my newly found 32GB RAM system could comprehend, this became from one of the most uneventful to one of the most interesting salvages I've done in a long while. I was genuinely excited to see what would be in the next machine, and that excitement was definitely not met with disappointment because this machine one up to the previous one tenfold. I'm talking an even bigger SSDs, an Intel Xeon chip, and two 16GB RAM sticks. I felt like a right peasant only having 32GB of RAM. In four sticks, this thing had it in two. My PC speed could triple. I needed to get this thing in ASAP. Now one of the things you need to know about most PCs is that the GPU will probably be in the way of a lot of things including the RAM. So the first thing you have to do is remove the graphics card, which I've never done before. Now the majority of at least gaming graphics cards will have this little latch thing here that acts as a sort of security measure to make sure the card doesn't fall out. It's just a simple little thing you click forward. And I didn't see it. I remember trying to rip it out and struggling so much that so many times within that process I just thought, wait, no, I'm actually gonna break this thing, I need to stop. I was so puzzled and scared of this process that I had to look up an entire YouTube tutorial about it. Who does that? Luckily for me, I uninstalled it safely. Look, here it is. I'm, I'm holding it. Installed the 16 gigs of RAM and, oh, wait, my computer isn't booting up. For the first time ever in this PC's history, this thing was failing to boot up the start menu. And I started seeing lights on the motherboard that I have never seen before. And it's starting to rain. Ah, should be fine, it's not my problem, it's, it's just my problem. Okay, now this problem doesn't directly involve my PC. <laughs> Clickbait, what are you talking about? Never heard of it. But I'm still really mad about it. So my school has their own provided laptops, which is kind of cool since I didn't have to go buy one myself. But it's also because they are the worst performing shizakartstons in existence. They're using the worst Windows operating system, Windows 8. And our school's IT department is actually hopeless. Like, I'm not even kidding. They struggled fi finding a USB. Someone asked for a USB, they struggled with it. The only impressive thing they've ever done is block chat GPT on the network, which still isn't that great. I bought my external drive to school because one day I had to transfer some pretty bulky files onto the school network, and this absolute joke of a network has a little gimmick, this little tendency to disconnect everything connected to it if it's in the middle of a big transfer. And of course, this I didn't know about until the moment that my hard drive was completely unreadable by the school computer. And like, it's not like this thing had any important stuff or anything, it only just had all of my sound effects, all of my green screen stuff, and a bunch of these garbage time videos and a lot more important stuff that I can't really say here because of privacy reasons, you know, stuff like that. Oh yeah, there are ways to recover the lost data, the only problem is it wasn't free. And it wasn't exactly cheap. Do you wanna know how much it costs to fix this mess? Three digits. And the first number isn't one. But but it's fine, it's honestly fine, it's alright, I'm, I'm not really mad about- Okay, now I promise this is the story. This is the story that you've all came here for. Okay, I'll, I'll just get along with it. Now, remember when I said I salvaged those two machines with a bunch of drives in them? Yeah, I only ever looked at those properly until like at least a month or two after I received them. It's only when I salvaged the SSDs from my first ever laptop, a video coming up on that soon, I promise, that I realized, oh wait, these are actually usable. Look, I looked up a YouTube tutorial on removing a graphics card. I like to think my stupidity is justified. Now to put these SSDs in, I need to access the very back of the computer, far away from all the fragile, breakable motherboard stuff. Right? right? So I open up the back of the panel and start looking for some SATA cables and oh what's this? This looks like a pretty old connector and it doesn't look like it's in use. Well, I might as well rip it out. Doing the opposite of this decision would have saved me so much adrenaline and stress beyond any other issue already covered. 
If there's ever a life lesson you could take away from this, is that if you see a random cable that you think is useless, then follow the cable back to its origin, because chances are that it will lead to your entire RGB hub that not only controls the outside lights of the thing, but also the surrounding fans. Listen, you chose this. You wanted to listen to my stupidity. I don't know why I'm being mean all the time. You look great today, like and subscribe. Even though I remembered to turn the whole power supply off when taking this whole thing apart, I forgot to turn off the outlet. Do you want to know what happened when I boot up that thing? The power supply sparked, and not only did all the lights and exterior fans turn off, but the horrendous smell of burning metal mixed with electricity absolutely polluted the room. Out of the purest stress, agony, and fear of being intoxicated, I guess, that I've ever felt in my life, I disconnected everything and just went out of the room in pure denial and there i sat not in, not in tears just in denial i'm not that depressed okay failing to take in the major mistake that i just made and this was like at midnight at this point to really set the scene in and so i started taking a few deep breaths went back into the room and tried to recover as many things as i could possibly I can't English ever. I made sure to plug everything back in safely this time, power up the system, and I did the exact same thing. You might be wondering or laughing at why I'm making such a big deal out of this situation, but you keep in mind that this is a pretty expensive machine. There's two things you gotta know about me, a little bit of me lore, I guess. It takes a lot of mental battles for me to even spend ten dollars. I am not an impulse purchaser at all, so almost losing 200 times that amount just was an experience I never thought I'd have to face. Also, I, I generally just have an intensely stressed and nervous personality anyway, but I thought I experienced stress before, and this was just on a completely another level. I'm not even sure how I managed to get this PC working again, but by pure luck and prayer, it eventually booted up like normal again. And then about a week later, I had similar issues when trying to install Linux Peppermint. But that, that hard drive's been wiped now, everything's worked just fine. Maybe. If you're wondering why the LEDs in this thing are no longer working, it's because for some reason no color input is being recognized and I'm still not entirely sure why. I've changed RGB hubs to no success. And that's the story of how I nearly broke the entire machine that's worth far more than I am. I know I say I don't do story time type stuff, but the reason why there's been a huge lack of anything on my channel is because of this situation. Also, I thought it would be a little fun to share, I guess. If you somehow made it to the end of this silly little video, congratulations, I guess. You can now officially flex on everyone else. You can even comment this to prove it. If you somehow liked this garbage, YouTube thinks you should watch this next. And also, what the hell does Canman18 vibes meant to mean? How... how do I give any sort of vibe from Canman18?